Hello, it's a very lovely good evening once again and welcoming each and everyone. So, beginning the new class and new session, in fact, that happens to be the first session of the day. So, in this particular session, we are still going to continue with data system. It's a pretty long, no doubt about that. But so far, what we have done, we have actually completed the basics and the intricacies of the accounting aspects of this particular what we call topic. Now, we will move a little bit ahead today with something else. So, question number seven, we are going to pick up. And in this question, we are going to learn actually something about invoicing. Invoicing, what exactly is actually and what we are supposed to do and how the accounting aspects actually will unfold. We are going to discuss with the help of question number seven. So, please actually open down your study mats and question number seven so that we can begin this session for the day it is going to be the first session so i have already told you still the data system is on and today we are going to discuss invoicing under it so by the time you open down your register allow me to actually write down the topic topic is still data system and we are discussing invoicing in it data system invoicing you might have had heard about it invoicing I do not know about that but this is the term often used anyway we are going to have a look over it closely and one are able to grasp the intricacies of invoicing half the battle will be won of course war still needs to be so let me actually frame down the linings actually it is important for comprehensive visualization of solution on your screens so well so we are going to start invoicing question number seven what invoicing is what we are supposed to do under it and why invoicing is generally adopted by the organizations we shall discuss it but before that actually first of all first of all how we will come to know about that this question is of invoicing just go through question number seven a head office at Jaipur has a branch at Kolkata to which goods are invoiced by the head office just pay attention towards these verdicts at cost plus 25 percent in the last session actually we did near about four questions correct but in none of them this particular line was given so if the question states that goods are being sent at so and so percent then it is a clue for you that this question belongs to the category of invoicing correct so how the question you are going to actually distinguish belongs to invoicing category is this particular line that goods are being sent at cost plus 25 percent correct further it is stated in the question that all cash received by the branch is daily remitted to the head office all expenses are paid from Jaipur and from the following particulars show how the branch account will appear in the books of head office now even though this question is of invoicing without any doubt first of all actually I am doing this question as if actually as if this particular this particular question is of what we call normal category correct first I am doing this question as if it is a normal question so I did not what we call elaborate at this particular point what invoicing is I am simply doing the question in a simple manner then we will understand the meaning of invoicing from a better perspective correct so you are well aware of the fact by now actually that entire accounting in the books of what we call entire accounting under data system is done in the books of head office so we write in the books of head office question number seven we are picking up that's the title in the books of head office in the books of head office you are very well familiar with the fact that what account we are supposed to prepare in the books of head office so this is books of, these are books of head office in this books you are going to prepare branch account and of course one sales ledger that is known as dater's account branch account and dater's account this is your branch account And 
this is your branch account correct now we will also prepare branch dater's account branch dater's account along with it so these two accounts are generally prepared under what we call dater system first of all i am doing this question from a normal perspective as if this question is not of invoicing category correct then i will explain the contours contours means features of invoicing then later on i will explain it first of all i am doing the question in a normal manner uh, i have already told you it is given to us opening stock opening balances are brought down on the debit side we are familiar with it now opening balances opening balance brought down opening balance of stock is given to us so we shall write here stock in bracket it is written invoice price but i did not pay any attention to it first of all i am doing the question as if it is not of invoice price correct then cash in hand is given i told you in the last class actually most of the expenses of the branch are definitely met by head office for example salary rent wages insurance advertising such major expenses are generally met by head office in fact head office what we call sends cash to branch to meet such expenses but at the same time a general policy is adopted that generally head office leaves some cash balance in the hands of the branch manager actually to meet what we call expenses of petty nature so such expenses are met by the branch manager out of petty cash available with him now cash in hand is nothing but it is your petty cash cash in hand is nothing but your petty cash petty cash means amount with the branch manager to meet expenses of petty nature then we have been given debtors debtors are rupees 30000 debtors 30000 opening balance of debtor since you are preparing debtor's account will also come down over here so 30000 opening balance of debtors you will write here also then you have been given cash sales uh, goods invoice from jaipur actually goods invoice from jaipur so whenever head office will send goods to branch manager you are going to debit it goods sent to branch account 80000 worth of goods have been sent by head office to branch 80000 we are not paying any attention towards the word invoice at this moment then we have been given cash sales by now we are very well familiar that it is a component of remittances remittances are written towards the credit side remittances means amount collected by branch manager on account of cash sales and from debtors and sent back to head office so cash sales actually you are going to write first cash sales amount of cash sales given to you in this question is 35000 so 35 you are going to write down here and then we have been given credit sales you should also be familiar with it by now that credit sale is a transaction which takes place between head office and branch and that is the reason actually that credit sales will always come on the debit side of branch debtors account credit sales then we have been given goods returned by debtors remember one thing there are two types of return one goods returned by branch that figures in branch account but this is goods returned by debtors means branch sold the goods to the customers and customer returned the goods back to what we call branch office so goods returned by debtors is nothing but your sales return and sales return are nothing but return inwards goods returned by debtors instead of writing such a long what we call sentence you can simply write sales return goods return by debtors or sales return are absolutely one and same thing so you are going to 
show it on to the credit side and we know it already very well that sales return always figures on the opposite side of credit sales now goods returned by debtors in this case is equal to 3000 so you are going to write 3000 then discount allowed to debtors discount allowed to debtors discount allowed to debtors discount allowed to debtors is 300 then checks received from jaipur checks received from jaipur checks received from jaipur means head office sent checks to the branch to meet such expenses so entry will be branch account debit to bank account now cash or bank has been sent by head office to meet expenses in the form of wages and salaries wages and salaries in this case is 11000 then head office sent some checks to meet rental expenses rent in this case is 4000 and similarly head office sent some amount for purchase of office furniture branch might be in need of some furniture so head office send them some cash to the extent of 1500 now you have to pay attention in the sense head office sent 1500 to branch correct and branch purchased a furniture out of it no doubt about that so branch has purchased furniture out of that it means at the end of the current accounting year actually there will be a balance in the form of furniture and fittings isn't it or not with the branch since branch has purchased furniture so without an iota or doubt at the end of the current year there must be furniture with the branch is it clear so now next point is balance of stock so closing stock with the branch is 20000 that is also given although it is given at invoice price right now we are ignoring the word invoice price and we are doing the question as if it is not of invoice price correct similarly balance of debtors is given to us balance of debtors is balance of debtors is 27000 In the last class also, I told you, in the last session, whatever you may call it actually, I told you that before we tally this particular account, we must be sure of the fact that all the items related to daters, that is opening daters, closing daters, and cash received from daters must be present. Isn't it or not? Unfortunately, in this question, cash receipt from debtors is not given. So that is the missing figure. That figure can be driven from what we call branch debtors account. But before we derive that particular figure, we must also post closing balance 27,000 in debtors account. Now, after posting this account, now we should tally this account. And the balancing figure will be, of course, cash receipt from debtors. Now, cash received from debtors most probably will be equal to 51,700, I think so. Cash from debtors. This is your balancing figure. So, whatever figure is missing down over there, you can get it what we call through branch debtors account. Presuming that this figure is correct, now I, I will write this particular figure in the branch account and I am going to write here by cash from debtors. Now, cash from debtors happens to be, in this case, 51,700. From now onwards, from now onwards, whenever you would tally this account, you have to make two things absolutely crystal clear. One, opening balance, closing balance of debtors and cash received from debtors must be present before we tally the account. And second important point is that, please pay attention, all the opening balances, please pay attention, all the opening balances must have corresponding closing balances. All the opening balances 
must have corresponding closing balances. It is necessary. But it is not necessary that every closing balance should also have opening balance. That is not a necessity. Is it clear to you? Only necessity is every opening balance must have a corresponding closing balance. Now, first of all, we will check whether every opening balance is having corresponding closing balance or not. Opening stock, there is a corresponding closing stock, fine. Daters, there are closing daters. But cash, there is no closing cash at this moment. So we must compute the closing cash. How will we do that? Please pay attention. Petty cash. Even in the last class, we had a little bit of discussion regarding that. Petty cash is a real account, correct, maintained by the branch manager to meet the day-to-day -day expenses or expenses of petty nature, correct. In this case, opening balance with the branch is 200. Now you have to look carefully whether it is given in the question or not that any pet, any what we call cash has been sent by branch manager, by the head office to the branch for petty expenses or not. What my point is, you have to look into the question whether it is given that head office has sent some cash to meet petty expenses. For example, if in this, if in this question it would have been given this way around. Two cash. Amount sent by branch manager, amount sent by head office to branch for petty expenses. Suppose if it would have been given in the question, then I would have had written it onto the debit side. Suppose if in the if in this particular question it would have been given that head office sent 4000 worth of cash to branch to meet petty expenses, then I would have had written it onto the debit side. Is it clear? Now, if this figure would have been given, then I would have had added it plus amount sent. Unfortunately, in this question, no amount has been sent. So it means balance with branch manager is still 200. Now, we have to look into the question to find out whether any petty expenses have been given or not. Now, it could be given two way rounds. It could be given either way. Either it could be given this way round that petty expenses rupees 2000 or it can be given this way round that branch manager's expenses 2000. Remember one thing, there is a slight difference between branch expenses and branch manager's expense. Even in the last session, we had a discussion regarding that. Branch manager's expense signify amount spent by branch manager out of petty cash available with him. Is it clear to you? So, in this question, unfortunately, even petty expenses or branch manager's expense is not given. Suppose if it would have been given, then I would have had subtracted it. Is spent. Is spent means amount is spent by branch manager out of petty cash available with him. So, in fact, in this question, the closing balance of petty cash is also 200. So, this is a very significant rule that every opening balance must have a corresponding closing balance because if you would be unaware of this particular rule, then mistake might creep in. Is it clear to you? So, once we are sure that we have checked out these two rules, now we are in a position to tally it and find out our net profit. If this question would not have been of invoicing, then my solution is completed and I am in a position now to compute my net profit. Is it clear to you? But this question is of invoicing. So, now we have to do something else also in this question. So, First, I did the question as if it is a normal question. Now, we are going to complete it with the help of concept of invoicing. Now, pay attention. Before we do the what we call other part of the solution, now let me have a discussion with respect to that so you are in a better position to understand the meaning. Invoicing, what we mean by invoicing? See here. 
there is a general rule that no business in fact no businessman wants it employees to know about the real profit earned by the business similarly we can apply this to the organizations having branches head office never wants branches to know about the real profit being earned by the head office share out of fear that tomorrow these branches might might start some competitive business against us so that is the reason actually a general policy among the head offices that they do not want to reveal their head office their real profits to their branches so technique which is adopted by head office to hide their real profits from the branches is known as invoicing you got the meaning of invoicing so invoicing is a technique which is generally adopted by the organization to hide their profits from what we call respective components of the business in this case component means branch correct just pay attention i am deviating from the solution now correct suppose there is a head office and head office sent 5 lakh worth of goods 5 lakh is the cost price correct head office this year i am taking a general what we call uh, discussion now i am not talking about this particular question i will complete it later now just pay attention suppose there is a head office and in the current year it sent goods costing rupees 5 lakhs correct when head office will send the goods obviously head office will have to do some packing also so these goods are closed down in some cases boxes correct these are cases in which goods are being sent or you can say boxes also now what head office did actually generally when goods are sent by way of or through cases or boxes a paper slip is what we call sticked to the case paper slip a paper slip is attached or is sticked paper slip paper slip correct suppose i am in delhi i am the head office and you are in bangalore you are my branches i am going to send you the goods obviously i will have to pack them up in some cases and i am going to stick attach a paper slip to it whereby i will write the quantity i will write the cost i will write the price which i would like you to sell at what we call these goods so that when you receive the goods through this particular paper slip you should come to know actually how much quantity has been sent by us to you and at what price we want you to dispose them off that is a general policy this paper slip is nothing in fact it is known as invoice this paper slip is nothing that is your invoice is it clear to you in the invoice i have already told you particulars regarding the goods quantity etc are written down but what head office did now pay attention head office when it sent the goods actually what it did head office was aware of the fact that cost price of the goods is 5 lakhs head of head office is very well aware of the fact that cost price of the goods is 5 lakh but intentionally intentionally in full consciousness what head office did head office increased what we call its cost and that is known as loading or margin it is known as loading or for simplicity we may say margin it added some margin to it say rupees 2 lakh correct what my point is cost price of the goods was 5 lakh but head office did not write on the paper slip rupees 5 lakh head office wrote down that its cost price is 7 lakh now this is the price which is written on the paper slip and paper slip is invoice so that is the reason this price is known as invoice price it is known as invoice price 
is it clear to you or not head office is now playing a game with with the branch intentionally head office increase the cost is it clear to you indirectly head office wants to tell you that this is the cost of what we call these goods but at the same time remember one thing you are the branches i am the head office and you are not what we call buddhu you got my point or not you are very well we are suave we are intelligent guys even you know very well that price which is being quoted before us is not the real cost price even you are aware of it but only thing is that now you will groove in the dark regarding the real cost price you will never be able to what we call come close to the cost price simply because you do not have an idea regarding the real cost price you too are aware of the fact you are the branches remember one thing even you are aware of the fact that this is not the real cost but only thing is that you will groove in the dark as i said and you will not be able to what we call know the real cost price so this is the technique which is generally adopted by the head office with with their branches to hide their profits is it clear to you and in accounting terminology actually what we would say we would say from the point of view of head office that this is the cost price and this is the margin by which they enhance the price they increase the price this is known as loading or margin and the price at which goods are being sent is known as invoice price is it clear to you now i am going to ask a question of you i am the head office correct will head office ask its branch manager now to dispose the goods at rupees 7 lakh or above this price you give me the answer head office first you listen to the question very carefully cost price of the goods is 5 lakh head office increase the price by 2 lakh and branch is unaware of it correct head office send the goods to you at a price which is quoted before you at 7 lakh so you are in under impression that this is the cost price correct now my question is will head office ask its branches now to sell their goods at this price or above it problem is that most of you are going to answer me you know what most of you are going to say sir above it no don't develop this what we call confusion unfortunately this is the confusion which is nursed by many students they are always under an impression that head office will now ask the branch manager to sell above it no 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 it's a big no head office will never ask the branch manager to sell above this price remember one remember this and don't let it skip out of your memory correct head office will simply ask the branch manager to sell the goods at this price only is it clear to you or not in other words now we have concluded that invoice price and selling price are one and same thing unless and until i would add something extra that's a different matter till i would say something more than that till up to that particular point you should understand one thing that invoice price and selling price are one and same thing is it clear to you or not cost price of the goods is 5 lakh head office increase the goods by rupees 2 lakh that is known as loading price quoted before the branch manager is 7 lakh and head office will now ask the branch manager to sell the goods at this price only that is the reason invoice price and selling price are one and same thing correct now suppose all the goods have been sold by branch manager correct now how the branch account will be prepared in this case in this case branch account will be prepared this way round see here good sent to branch now you let me know actually at what price should i write here should i write here at 5 lakh or should i write here at 7 lakh some of you are telling 5 lakh and some of you are telling actually 7 lakh so you are in a dilemma remember one thing head office will head office is doing the accounting but it is doing the accounting from the point of view of branch don't let it skip again you are getting my point or not 
head office is doing the accounting from from the point of view of branch so obviously branch is under an impression that goods worth rupees 7 lakhs have been sent to us so that is the reason here 7 lakhs will be written is it clear to you even though cost price of the goods is 5 lakh but we are going to write here invoice price is it clear to you now branch was instructed to sell 5 lakh worth of goods at 7 lakh remember one thing branch does not know the real cost price now presuming all the goods have been sold by branch so I will write here sales presuming all the goods have been sold by way of cash so cash sales so all the goods have been sold and goods would be sold at rupees 7 lakh because head office itself asked the branch manager to sell the goods at rupees 7 lakh now my point is how much profit has been earned by head office in this particular case obviously you can say and you are right in telling me that it's 2 lakh absolutely it is 2 lakh no doubt about that because head office knows the cost price and the difference of selling price and cost price is nothing but it is the profit but unfortunate thing is that profit is not being reflected from the branch account that is the problem we have earned the profit head office has earned a profit of rupees what we call 2 lakh no doubt about that because real price of the cost goods is cost of 5 lakh so obviously in this case profit which is accruing to head office is rupees 2 lakhs unfortunate thing is that branch is not reflecting that profit so in order to compute that profit what we are supposed to do now in order to compute the profit see here I will have to bring this item good send to branch I will have to bring this item at cost and in order to bring it at cost I will have to write here buy goods send to branch loading correct and the loading is 2 lakh first of all you must understand the meaning of loading loading is always written on the opposite side of invoice price when we write the loading on the opposite side generally we are unloading but unfortunately because of the terminology we have to use the word loading only we do not we are not supposed to use the word unloading but from the close angle if we are going to watch it we will find actually we are unloading the loading isn't it or not so goods sent to branch worth rupees 7 lakh are being brought down to its cost price by writing the loaded amount onto the opposite side is it clear to you so now this particular account is reflecting rupees 2 lakhs now you must try to understand one point when we say we are putting up the loading on the opposite side what exactly we are doing we are basically computing the cost of goods sold see here in this question there is no opening stock only goods sent to branch is given and no closing stock is there so obviously goods sent to branch itself is the cost of goods sold so when I am doing the loading on the opposite side it means actually I am computing the cost of goods sold so don't let it skip out of your memory that loading indirectly means actually computation of real cost of goods sold because of this particular reason that loading means I told you loading means computation of real cost of goods sold it means the word loading has got relation with goods only you have already studied it in your earlier phases of education that loading is generally related to opening stock closing stock but you have never paid any attention that why it is related to only goods because indirect meaning of loading is computation of cost of goods sold that is the reason actually loading is related to only goods so loading generally is related to opening stock closing stock goods sent to branch account so if these items are at invoice price 
you will have to bring them at cost price. Similarly, opening stock, closing stock, good send to branch, good send to branch returns, good send to branch return and in the upcoming questions we would see such items like goods in transit, similarly goods transferred. It means term loading is related to goods only and it is related to goods only because because loading indirectly means computation of cost of goods sold. So that is the reason actually if opening stock is at invoice price you will have to bring them at cost price by doing the loading on the opposite side. Similar, similarly closing stock goods sent to branch and these items if given in the question at invoice price you will have to bring them to the cost price. Is it clear to you? Now another point. Point number one is that word loading is related to only these items. Point number two. Point number two is that and it's a very important point. I have already told you in entire branch accounting, actually there are three parties which are involved. Head office, branch office and customers. Correct? Head office, branch office and customer. Only such goods which are traveling between head office and branch office and branch office and head office only loading is done with respect to such goods. What my point is, if there are goods which are traveling or should I say commuting between branch office and customers, in that case loading will not be done. That is the reason actually that loading is never done with respect to sales returns. You got my point or not? We have studied it many times that loading is not done with respect to sales return. But now it should become clearer to you that why loading is not done with respect to sales return because neither branch nor customers are aware of the real cost price. So how come they, how come they can bring the item to the cost price? It's not possible. So that's the reason actually goods which are commuting between what we call branch office and customers need not require any loading adjustments. Is it clear to you? So loading will be with respect to only such goods which are commuting between what we call head office and branch office. Is it clear? So if these things are clear, now we can come back to this particular question. Now, little bit of attention you need to pay with respect to this. If you have gone through the opening lines, it is given in this question that head office is in Jaipur and goods are being sent or invoiced at cost plus 25%. Goods are being sent at cost plus 25%. Now this is the clue that this question belongs to invoicing category. But before that, see here. Questions which are related to invoice price opening lines or should I say prefacing lines, opening lines. The opening lines will tell you either, either goods are being sent, goods are being sent, goods are being sent at Either of these two things will be given in the opening lines, correct? Opening lines will tell you either goods are being sent at so and so margin on cost. For example, in this case, I can say goods are being sent at 25% margin on cost. Cost plus 25% means goods are being sent at 25% margin on cost. Or it could have been given this way round also. Goods are being sent at so and so percent on invoice price. Remember one thing, invoice price is selling price. Invoice price. So either of these two rates will be given in the question. So please pay attention actually. Once you are able to comprehend that, then we shall be able to pick up the speed later on. Correct? In questions which are related to invoice price, the opening lines will give you rates which are based either on cost 
or either on invoice price either of these two one will be given to you is it clear to you for example in this case you are given 25% on cost 25% on cost it could have been given it is not given but it could have been given this way round also 25% on invoice price goods are being sent at a margin of 25% on invoice price it could have been given this way round also correct first of all you note it down whether rate is based upon cost or rate is based upon invoice price once you have noted it down and carefully analyzed now you make an equation and you have made this equation on several occasions cost plus loading or margin whatever you may like to write is equal to invoice price correct cost plus margin is equal to invoice price after assuring yourself that rate is on cost or on invoice price once you have assured yourself for example in this case you have assured yourself that rate is on cost correct if please pay attention if rate is on cost always presume cost to be 100 so in this case you will presume cost as 100 now to compute 25% of 100 that is 25 and you will get the invoice price 125 now pay attention if the rate would have been given on invoice price then 100 would have been presumed what invoice price if the rate is on invoice price then presume invoice price as 100 compute 25 so in this case your equation will be filled like this so it is important it is it is important to understand that you will have to note down the opening rates very carefully in this question opening rate which i am writing with black pen black ink actually not exactly black pen so 25% on cost that is the reason actually cost is given to you as 100 and margin is 25 and invoice price is 20 125 just to make you understand better if the rate would have been given on invoice price you would have had presumed invoice price as 100 and your equation would have shown like this correct now once you have filled up your equation now what you do you write the margin in numerator and in the denominator you write invoice price in accounting language i will call it this is rate of invoice price this is rate of invoice price this is rate of margin sorry this is rate of margin on invoice price is it clear to you it means if your invoice price is 5 there is a loading of 1 and cost is 4 is it clear to you in this case what would have been the rate margin write in numerator in the denominator write invoice price in this case your rate would have been 1 by 4 so that is how the first step is that in case of invoicing you must know how to compute what we call your rates is it clear so repeating quickly in case of invoice first of all look at the rates and try to analyze whether it is given on cost or on invoice price accordingly you make what we call your equation find out your rate on invoice price is it clear now I have already told you because this question is of invoice price correct before that you must understand it's a big point it's a very very big point and if you are not able to comprehend then mistakes there are chances of mistake which otherwise would creep in see here what i am saying opening rates please pay attention opening rates in the prefacing line opening rates may be given either on cost or on invoice price opening rates might be given either on cost or on invoice price but 
बट आइटम्स विच आर रिलेटेड टू गुड्स आइटम्स विच आर रिलेटेड टू गुड्स लाइक ओपनिंग स्टॉक गुड्स सेंड टू ब्रांच अकाउंट एंड क्लोजिंग स्टॉक करेक्ट ऑल दीज आइटम्स विच आर गिवन बिलो इन द क्वेश्चन shall always be at invoice price unless and until i would say something else is it clear to you try to understand this point don't get confused by the fact what sort of what we call confusion may arise sometimes student actually goes through the opening line they find the rate is given on cost they presume that below goods are given in cost no that is not the case opening rates might be given at cost price or at invoice price but goods below shall always be at invoice price now pay attention for example in this case here it is written opening stock at invoice price now even though if the word invoice price would not have been written then you would have had presume it to be at invoice price only you got my point or not what i said opening rates may be at cost price or may be at invoice price but information below in the question which would be given to you with respect to goods will always be at invoice price unless i would add something else to it later on is it clear to you or not so opening rates might be at cost or invoice price irrespective of that items below shall always be at invoice price it means now what i am supposed to do i have to bring the opening stock which is at invoice price at its cost price in order to bring it at cost price i will have to write on the opposite side loading load on opening stock so i will have to bring it to the cost and in order to bring it to the cost i will have to write the loading portion similarly good sent to branch i will have to presume it is at invoice price is it clear to you so i will have to again write load on goods sent to branch account to bring it at cost similarly closing stock is given to you is it clear to you closing stock is 20000 it is also at invoice price i have already told you items which would be furnished to you later on in the question shall always be at invoice price and in order to bring it to cost i will have to move over to the opposite side i will have to write load on closing stock so load on closing stock now how to bring them to cost it's very simple see here we know in this question rate is at cost so we framed this equation we computed our rate that is 1/5 i told you what 1/5 is 1/5 means if invoice price is 5 if invoice price is 5 your loading or margin is 1 now suppose i want to compute the loading load element of opening stock what i am supposed to do this is at invoice price so below invoice price i will write 12000 correct if 5 is the invoice price 1 is the loading if 12000 is the invoice price what is the loading that is 12000 into 1 divided by 5 that is equal to 2400 it means you have seen actually in order to bring them to cost we have to write the loaded element and now we need not require to go by the unitary method all we need to do is we have to multiply the relevant item by what we call this particular rate so that is the use of computing this particular rate so in order to compute the what we call cost of opening stock i will have to write the loading on the opposite side now all i need to do is to multiply it with 1 by 5 so 2400 when i am writing it down over here it means i am reflecting the real cost which is 9600 similarly there are goods sent to branch account in this case which is worth rupees 80000 and you are going to write here into 1 by 5 so this is the loading element in it so 16000 you are going to write here 
it means you are writing 64,000 cost price. Similarly, your closing stock is 20,000. So, 20,000 into 1 by 5, now you will write and 4,000 will be the loading of closing stock which you are going to write down here. Is it clear to you? So, now we can say the solution to this particular question is completed. It's a pretty long one because in fact in one question we did almost four things. Correct? We have been able to understood now, understand what we call the concept of loading and how loading is incorporated in the accounts that is important. 11,100 is your net profit. Since question is solved and everything is given down over here, we can directly what we call move to other section, other part. So we can pick up yet another question to understand it from a better perspective. So in order to understand it from a better perspective, now 2002, prepare Nenital branch account in the books of head office and goods are being sent at a profit margin of 20% on selling price. <coughs> Opening rates might be given at invoice price or cost price I just told you. Isn't it or not? Opening rates might be given at cost price or invoice price. So could you let me know actually at what price this time rates have been given. Sir, it is given on selling price. Now you tell me, is it cost price or invoice price? It's invoice price, absolutely. So you have been able to at least grasp something. So quickly tell me the rates. Since the rate is this time 20% on invoice price, rate is 20% on invoice price because invoice price and selling price is one and same thing. So I will have to make this equation. So invoice price will be 100 and margin will be 20 and your cost price will be 80. Isn't it or not? So now we are in a position to frame the rate. Rate will be 1 by 5 again. It means if the invoice price happens to be 5, then your loading will be 1 by 5, 1. So same rate. Now we can move over to the question. Opening stock this time given to us. Opening stock in this case is 5,000. So opening stock you have written here now. Opening stock 5,000. Now. You need not require to wait for later stages. Immediately bring it to the cost. So on to the opposite side you will write 5000 into 1 by 5. Is it clear to you? So that is how the questions of invoicing will be done. So 1000 you are going to write it on to the opposite side to what we call get the real cost of this particular item. Similarly opening dates. Now Dators are not goods. Remember one thing. So no question of loading. Loading is a term which is related to only goods. And loading is never done with respect to sales. Because if we are going to do the loading of sales also, then we shall not be able to compute the profit. So loading of dators is not done simply because dators are also very much part of sales. Isn't it or not? So that is the reason no question of loading of dators. You will write simply here 2000. And you will write in the opening balance 2000 rupees. Now, next point here is furniture. Furniture is 1000. Furniture are not goods. Furniture is an asset. Correct? So, no question of loading. Loading is only with respect to goods. Then we have been given petty cash. Petty cash, now you sh are very well familiar with it, means cash available with the branch to meet day-to-day -day expenses. Then we have been given insurance prepaid. Now prepaid insurance is also an asset, isn't it or not? So prepaid insurance, you are going to write down here, prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance is 50. Now, what happens? On rare cases, you might be given, you might be given opening balances of liability. So if per chance opening balance of liabilities are given, then you are obviously going to bring them down towards the credit side. In this case, salaries due or outstanding have been given. 
So salary is outstanding which have been given to us is equal to 1000. So you are going to write them here. Correct? Salary is 1000 is it? Yeah. Then salaries remittances. Now it is given to you that goods sent to branch, nothing is mentioned whether it is at cost or invoice price, at what price you are going to presume it, invoice price, good, very good, because just a move integral I told you, goods which will be given below in the question will always be at invoice price, so that means this year head office sent to branch 40,000 worth of goods at invoice price. And now you are going to bring them to their real cost price by writing 40,000 into 1 by 5 loading loading on goods sent to branch that is 8,000. So 8,000 you are going to write them. Then it is given to you cash sales 55,000. Cash sales is 55. So you are going to write here 55,000. Besides that, you have been given this time total sales 70,000. Now, total sales 70,000. Cash sales 55,000. So, 70 minus 55 is nothing but your credit sales. And credit sales will figure in debit side of branch debtors account. Why? Because it's a transaction between what we call customers and branch. Then cash receipt from debtors have been given to us 16,000. So we shall write here 16. And cash receipt from debtors, cash receipt from debtors will also be written in the branch debtors account. Cash from debtors. Cash from debtors is 16,000. So you are going to write down here 16,000. Correct. Then it is given to you in this case goods returned by branch. If branch will return the goods, first of all we are going to write it on the credit side. Goods sent to branch returns. Goods sent to branch returns. 500 worth of goods have been returned by branch back to head office. So, even loading of this will be done. So, later on you are going to write loading on. Loading on. Goods sent to branch return. Goods sent to branch returns. Correct? You are going to write there 500 into 1 by 5. So, loading will be 100. Then you have been given goods returned by debtors 200. So here you will have to exercise caution. Sales return, you will write in debtors account, but you are not going to do any loading in it. You got my point or not? Because of two reasons. One, it is a transaction between branch office and data. And secondly, sales return are very much part of sales. So that is the reason, no question of any loading. Now cash sent to branch. So Head office send some cash to branch which you are going to write here to cash. Cash has been sent with respect to meet rental expenses of 3600. You are going to write here 3600. Then you have been given salaries. Some cash has been set to meet expenses with respect to salaries which comes down to 10,200. 10,200 then petty cash 600 so head office this time sent petty cash also to a branch worth rupees 600 next item is insurance so some cash has been sent to meet insurance expense and in the bracket something is written insurance 400 one by one we will take it first we first 
we come down to petty cash. So please pay attention. Opening balance of petty cash is 200, correct? How much petty cash has been sent this year? 600 worth of petty cash has been sent. So it means closing petty cash balance should be 800. But now it is given in the question, petty cash expenses incurred by the branch is 500. We cannot write petty cash expenses directly because it is a real account and we never prepare real account under this particular system by now. You are well familiar with it, isn't it or not? So in order to reflect petty expenses, we take this methodology. Out of 800, 500 has been spent, petty expenses. So we shall write the closing balance of petty cash 300. So when I am showing 200 here, 600 here, that means 800 on the debit side and 300 on the credit side, it means I am reflecting amount is spent, that is 500. Is it clear to you? So, it is important to understand that by doing this what we call, we are trying to actually incorporate in branch account the amount of petty expenses only. But don't ask please now actually that why we can't directly write petty expenses simply because we are not preparing petty cash account separately. We are not preparing means under this system branch never prepares any other account besides these two. Now, <coughs> we come over to insurance. Insurance as you have seen actually it is written up to June 2002. What does it mean? So in order to make you understand it better please pay attention here actually. Current accounting year your starts in fact, first I am writing previous current account, previous year. Your current accounting year is starting on 1-4-2001 and it is ending on 31st of, it is ending on 31st of 2002. This is the end of current accounting year, correct? So your last accounting year must have had commenced on this particular date and it must have ended on 31st of 3, 2001. This is your last accounting year. It is given to you that insurance expenses which are meant up to 30th of June 2002. Your current accounting year is ending on 31st of 3, 2002. But insurance expenses, insurance expenses are up to 30th of June 2002. Now, you must understand this point. Suppose I tell you that I paid an expense, I paid an expense worth rupees 10,000 say up to 30th June 2000, let us say 17. Could you tell me for which period these expenses are meant? What my point is, period is not given to you. It is just given to you that expenses are 10,000 up to 30th of June 2017. A very fundamental point is that actually unless and until unless and until specified other way round, in accounts we always presume that expenses covers a period of 12 months. It means when I am saying that expenses are up to 30th of June 17, it means it is covering a period from 30th of June 2016 or you can say 1st July 2016 up to this 12 months. You got my point or not? Any expense in account unless it's specifically stated otherwise shall always be presumed to cover a period of 12 months. What my point is and why I brought this particular point in the discussion, the reason is that actually it is given to us that insurance is covering a period till up to 30th of June 2002. So you should understand that this insurance expense is covering a period from 
इट इज कवरिंग ए पीरियड फ्रॉम थर्टी एथ जून टू थाउजेंड वन और फर्स्ट जुलाई वट एवर यू मे लाइक टू राइट फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर डेट टू दिस पर्टिकुलर डेट यू गॉट माई पॉइंट और नॉट This expense of फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज इज कवरिंग ए पीरियड ऑफ ट्वेल्व मंथ एंड नाइन मंथ आर फॉलोइंग इन दिस अकाउंटिंग पीरियड एंड थ्री मंथ जनवरी सॉरी थ्री मंथ अप्रैल मे एंड जून आर फॉलोइंग इन द नेक्स्ट अकाउंटिंग ईयर बिकॉज योर करेंट अकाउंटिंग ईयर इज एंडिंग ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर डेट इज इट क्लियर टू यू सो फोर हंड्रेड वर्थ ऑफ एक्सपेंस विच इज गिवन डेट Up to 30th June 2002 means this particular expense is covering a period from 30th of June 2001 till up to 30th of June 2002. Correct. Now, out of this 400, three months are related to next accounting year. That means out of 400, 100 worth of rupees are related to next year. Isn't it or not? Similarly, out of four hundred, nine hundred are related to current period. That is four hundred into nine by twelve. Is it clear? So that will be three hundred. This hundred, which is related to next accounting year, please pay attention what I am saying. Because we are going to close the accounting year on this particular day, don't. forget that so on this particular date this particular amount is nothing but prepaid so that is the reason actually i will have to write here prepaid insurance 100 prepaid insurance 100 prepaid insurance 100 i will have to write it 100 now try to understand Out of four hundred, we have been able to now analyze that out of four hundred, three hundred relates to this particular accounting year, and one hundred relates to next accounting year. Correct? It means in the current period we are talking about that is from thirtieth June till up to thirty first three two thousand two. That is nine months expenditure of current year with respect to insurance is three hundred. now my question is the current period is from this particular date to this particular date this is your current period from 1st april to 31st of march 2002 now in the current accounting period you tell me you tell me what about the expense of april may and june april may and june because 30th june so april may and june what about these three months 300 is covering a period from june from 1st july to 31st of 2002 now what about april may and june you tell me about this particular facet but before i ask that question please pay attention when i told you that out of 400 300 relates to next year it means this 100 is covering a period of april may and june of next year similarly the opening prepaid expenses which have been which which have been given to you these are covering a period of april may and june it means is it clear to you or not you are getting my point or not so this opening prepaid insurance is nothing but it is covering your current years period of april may and june now you tell me if suppose i am going to toss a very simple question i want to know my insurance expense of current accounting period current accounting period is from 142002 till up to 31st 32002 now could you tell me the expenses of insurance related to current accounting period yes you can say sir 50 plus 300 you are absolutely right it means insurance expense of current accounting period are 350 is it clear to you or not now you must also understand 
that in accounts wherever we do the accounts we always follow a cural system of accounting a cural system of accounting do you know the meaning of it it means if i am doing the account accounts for example i am preparing branch account from 142001 till up to 313202 this is the period for which accounting is being done in the contest of this question correct so accrual period means i will have to submit all such expenses in this account which are related to this period is it clear to you that is what we mean by accrual system of accounting accrual system of accounting simply means period for which the accounting is being done it should encompass expenses related to such period only it means 350 which i have already proved to you actually 350 are the insurance expense for this accounting period so in this account expense prepaid insurance expense 350 must get reflected so you have seen it how it is getting reflected we have written 50 here we have written 400 here so 450 and we have written 100 here so difference of these is nothing but your actual prepaid expenses for current year is it clear to you or not that is the what we call reason why we are writing prepaid closing insurance here now the next point is stock that is 3000 so we are going to write here closing stock 3000 closing stock 3000 closing stock 3000 and closing stock will be written here 3000 into 1 by 5 that is equal to 600 that is equal to 600 is it clear to you that is equal to 600 then depreciation on furniture 20% is given to you furniture 1000 rupees is given here furniture and fixture 1000 is given here correct so in order to bring the depreciation expense we will simply subtract 20% from here and we will write 800 so when i am writing before that actually closing stock 3000 i have written here in fact just hold on for a while closing stock 3000 So I was talking about furniture. So when I am writing one thousand over here and eight hundred here, the difference is nothing but your depreciation. Correct. So in this question, in this question, most of the things have been done now. So yes. So we will have to make a check whether first of all we will have to make a check with respect to debtors whether opening balance is given. It is given. Cash received from debtors is given, but closing debtors are not given. so we are going to tally this account and we are going to get what we call balancing figure of 800 rupees so this is our balancing figure so now we can write 800 here and every opening balance is having a corresponding closing balance so no problem in this question isn't it or not so everything is over so now we are in a position to compute the answer which you can do by yourself to 22750 now one more point actually i told you every opening balance must have a corresponding closing balance but this but this particular rule applies to only asset this particular rule applies to assets only why why it applies to assets only it does not apply to what we call Our, uh, what we call liability reason is that as per prudence we always are we always actually presume that outstanding amounts must have been paid first is it clear to you so that is the reason no closing outstanding salary we are going to write so rule is that only opening assets must have corresponding closing balances this rule does not applies to what we call liability side 
So that is how you are going to do this particular question. So after what we call having a look over it, now you should be in a position to do question number 21. Now we are picking up question number 21 quickly just to make it what we call more clear. Question number 21. So question number 21, not a very tough one, and you can easily manage it by yourself. So X and company has a branch at Delhi, goods are invoiced from head office, cost is 33. Rate this time is given on cost, cost plus 33, 1 by 3%. Now, since rate has been given on cost, I will have to frame the equation cost plus margin is equal to invoice price. Cost plus margin is equal to cost plus margin is equal to invoice price rate is given on cost so cost you will presume 100 margin is 33 1 by 3 and invoice price will be 133 by 1 by 3 so now you can compute the rate margin is 33 1 by 3 invoice price is 133 1 by 3, you will solve it further, you will get 100 by 3 divided by 400 by 3, so ultimately it will be equal to 1 by 4. Is it clear to you? Ultimately it will be equal to 1 by 4, so now you can actually go through the question quick fire in a quick fire manner, opening balances have been given opening balances with respect to datas which is given to you is 10,000 so you are going to write here 10,000 then we have been given what we call petty cash in this case so petty cash balance is 1,000 so petty cash 1,000 we have been given now furniture furniture is 2,000 so furniture 2,000 then there is stock worth 8,000. So as soon as I am going to write the stock, I should get reminded that I have to do the unloading also. In fact, it is not a term, but we have to use it. So 8,000 multiplied by 4 into 1 by 4. In fact, that is 2,000. So that is the loading on opening stock. Similarly, when you wrote down here daters, you must bring it down on the debit side of the daters account. You would write here 10,000. Then you have been given in this case cash sent by head office for petty expenses. So you will write two cash. In bracket, you can write cash sent for petty expenses. Cash sent for petty expenses cash sent for petty expenses how much it is in this case it happens to be 2000 so you are going to write here 2000 and immediately keep track of your petty cash also you had in the beginning in the petty cash in this case 1000 rupees so you shall write here petty cash about 1000 1000 was the opening balance just now you have gone through the fact that head office actually sent 2000 further petty cash so you will add it in the petty cash simultaneous tracking must be done then it is given branch expenses and losses freight and advertisement so for freight and advertisement head office shall send cash no doubt about that so freight and advertisement Freight and advertisement. Freight is 50. Then bad debts. Don't write two cash bad debts. For bad debts, head office will not send any cash. Bad debts will figure 
in branch account, no doubt about that. So you will write here bad debts. Bad debts in this case have been given to you at 50. So you are going to write down here 50 and then you have been given depreciation 80. So depreciation will be incorporated by subtracting it from the opening balance of furniture that is 80. It's a simple question. It should be simple because you have already attempted tougher one just a moment ago. 1920. Now we have been given petty expenses. So amount of petty expenses, I'm writing it with red pen. You are going to subtract it and then you are going to derive the closing balance. That means out of 3,000, 1,500 have been spent and branch manager is left up with 1,500. Correct? That is how the petty expenses will get reflected in the account and then we have been given in this case Cash sales 50,000. So you shall write here cash sales 50,000. Cash sales 50,000. Then you have been given credit sales. Credit sales will be written in the debtor's account 36. Then goods returned by debtors. So that is known as sales return. Goods returned by debtors are nothing but your sales return. That is 800, no question of any loading. Then we have cash receipt from debtors, 20,000. Cash receipt from debtors will also find place in what we call our debtors account. Our branch account, sorry, this is question number 21, which we are attempting now. Then we have, in this case, cash receipt from debtors. We have incorporated stock at the end is 7,800. So stock at the end is 7,800. You would write here 7,800. And of course, the loading part will be incorporated, closing stock. 7,800 into 1 by 4, that comes down to 1,950, is it? I think so. Yes, it is. 1,950. 1,950, that is loading on closing stock. Then it is given to you goods invoiced by head office during the year. Very late it is given in the question in this case. 88,000, that's the invoice price without any doubt and you are going to unload it. For the same, you will move opposite side, you will write 88, 1 by 4, that is 22. So 22,000, that's the unloading portion S to bring the item to the cost. So most of the items are over, prepaid insurance is not given in this question. Now, the first thing first is that we have to find out actually whether anything is missing with respect to data. So, opening balance given very well. Then, cash receipt from data are available. So, closing balance of data is not available in this case. You will have to find it out. So, it will be 25,150. That is the balancing figure which you will trace through preparation of your branch data account 25,150. Now 25,150 will be written down later on here and now you will give another check whether all opening assets are having your corresponding assets. Yes, very much it is available in the question. So now we are in a position to compute the profit 13,320 very quickly because answers are in front of me. Then. Logically now you should be in a position to attack all the 21 questions. It shouldn't be a problem and to be very honest with, with you because most of you are very quite keen to know actually whether it would strike in the examination or not unless you are very lucky. Now you understand actually what I want to add. Unless you are very lucky you won't be able to face any question from this particular section to be very honest with you but at the same time this particular part is the foundation upon which the entire chapter would be built as we are going to see just later on after what we call 
two three minutes we are going to attempt the another section that is stock and data system but for the same we will have to take a break till then it's goodbye and we are going to hold down a meeting with you again within a second or two later on